So we're starting our second to last chapter, and honestly, one of my favorites, which is the urinary system. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to learn here. We're going to talk about the structure of the urinary system. We're going to talk about the parts that each structure plays in this. We're going to look at both the macroscopic, the large scale, and the microscopic sides of the kidney. And then we'll talk about how blood and urine flow through the kidney. And so just to kind of get ourselves, you know, oriented with the urinary system, I think everyone hears urinary system and they think pee, right? They think urine, but really the job that the, the urinary system has is a, is a huge one. It's one of our main filtration systems. It's one of our main ways to actually get rid of metabolic waste, not just waste like the stuff we can't use from the food we eat, but the byproducts that are created from our cells. So it's really kind of cool. Um, and that's doing this all the time to cleanse the blood of all these waste products that build up that you don't even have to think about. You, almost, you pretty much never think about your urinary system until you get the urge to pee. Right? And so it's gonna help you keep what you need and then get rid of the waste you don't need. And so that's why I like this system so much is because it is so good at making sure that you are keeping everything that's still useful or as much stuff as you can that's still useful and getting rid of waste products so that they don't build up. So for this video, we're just gonna focus on the overview of the kidney, right? We're gonna look at the gross anatomy and then in the next videos, we'll go into the microscopic side and then the last one, we'll go into the urinary tract itself. But we're gonna focus on the big picture of the kidney first looking at the external structure, where we find it, all the structures that help support it and cover it. We'll talk about some of the major divisions and structures in the kidney, the blood vessels associated with it, and the pathway of blood through it. And then we'll talk about a little bit about the nephron. We'll focus more on the nephron in the next video. And then we'll trace how fluid flows through as blood through the kidney and then becomes urine. So where do we find the kidneys? These are going to be up against the posterior abdominal wall. They are retroperitoneum, meaning they are outside of that peritoneum, right? They're gonna be behind it. Um, these are protected by the ribs, so they're gonna be down kind of like just below your last ribs, your floating ribs. Um, so they're protected by those, they're protected by muscle, they're protected by fats, right? These guys are gonna be pretty much at your T12 to L3 level, with the left being a little bit higher than the right, right? And that's just because of the liver being in the way. And then right on top of the kidneys, we find the adrenal glands, right? I always say the adrenal glands are the kidneys hats, right? I'm a little silly, but maybe it helps you remember. Um, and you should remember the adrenal glands too, because we talked about them in the endocrine system. So let's go ahead and talk about the external anatomy um, for the kidneys. So we have the fascia, the fat pad, and the capsule. And you'll notice we put renal in front of that. So if you see renal, you should be thinking kidney, right? Kidney, 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 like renal failure, right? Um, that should be what you think. So we have the renal fascia. These are going to basically anchor and hold those kidneys in place. Um, the fat pad will then cushion and protect the kidney, hence like fat pad, right? If something's padding, it's cushioning. And then the capsule, this is gonna be uh, a dense irregular connective tissue all the way around it that's gonna help protect and hold the shape of the kidney. So if we look at where we see them, again, they're these little, they're about fist shaped or fist sized, I should say, not shaped, but sized, um, right back just below, kind of hiding behind your um, floating ribs. So the, the 12th rib is kind of helping give some protection there. Um, it's kind of sort of the 11th as well. Now if you, I'm gonna go back really fast um, to talk about the renal hilum, but I'll, so I'll read through this quickly and then we'll go, we'll go back. Um, but the, the hilum, and we've seen this before with some of the other uh, organs. Um, anytime you see hilum, you think like, it's gonna be where a lot of things are entering and exiting. It's like a main entry exit point there. And so with the renal hilum, we see like blood vessels, namely the renal artery and vein, lymphatic vessels, nerves, as well as the ureters, right? We saw hilum again with like the lungs, things like that. Same type of 
uh, structures are going to exit through that hillum. So we go back, right? This is the hillum, right, right here, where everything kind of connects and exits out. We don't see all that stuff drawn here, but it is there. If we go into the inside of the kidney, we have a few regions. We have the cortex and the medulla. Hopefully by now we've gotten familiar with these two terms, but if you haven't, cortex is always going to be the outer region. Medulla is going to be towards the middle. And then we have um, renal lobes. We have these areas within the kidney, right? Some of these are gonna extend through some of the regions. Um, others will only be in one region or the other. So let's go ahead and look at these. So the renal columns, this is going to divide the lobes. This goes from the cortex down into the medulla. And then within the medulla, we're gonna see these pyramid shapes, right, that are going to uh, be separated by the columns. They're, they stand out pretty well in the pictures. And then the tip of that pyramid is going to be the papilla. In the space right next to that, we have the minor calyx. And then where these minor calyxes merge, or calyces merge, we have the major calyx. And then these are gonna to come together to form the renal pelvis, which is what's going to kind of almost continuously lead into the ureter. So let's talk ourselves through it. So this is the hilum, again, right, where everything's kind of, everything's going on. We got things coming in and out all over. We see the renal cortex in this like kind of reddish pink color going all the way around. We see the renal medulla is going to be where every, all this stuff is here. All these colors it looks a lot. It looks smoother, at least in the, the depiction and the drawing. Um, the renal columns are running all the way through from in here all the way out in between the renal pyramids. So you see these triangle shapes, those are the renal pyramids. The renal papilla is at the very tip of that pyramid. We have the minor calyx or a minor calyx because there's a lot of them, right? So here's one of those minor calyx. Right here, we see when we join a couple of those minor calyces together, we get the major calyx and then all those major calyces join up to form the renal pelvis, which is what we, the big thing we see kind of exiting out the kidney, and then continuously it just becomes the ureter. So these are all the main structures you should be able to identify, as well as like the renal arteries and veins, right? That should be, on, that should be on your list as well. Um, so it's not too crazy when we're looking at the, the large scale anatomy of the kidney. Um, and it's really the one organ we're really going to dig into in terms of the individual structures or individual parts. Now we look at the blood vessels that are going through the kidney. We're going to start with the arterial side and then we can talk about venous. Um, we have the renal artery, which is going to be coming in from that abdominal aorta, right? If this is our starting point in the kidney. We are then going to go through these different blood vessels. We have the segmental artery, interlobar artery, arcuate artery, interlobular artery, afferent arterial, glomerulus, and efferent arterial. On the venous side, we have the paratubular capillaries, the vasorecta, the venules, the interlobular vein, the arcuate vein, interlobar vein, and renal vein. So we see kind of a pattern, right, in terms of the names, at least from like the uh, halfway point of this list. But this is going to be easier for us to follow because we had everything in order, but let, I think with the picture, it makes a little bit more sense. And I'm going to give you some things to kind of help you remember them as well, at least some of them. So we start with the renal artery, right? Coming into the kidney. We then go segmental because we're gonna go to our first segment. The interlobar because we're going into a lobe. The arcuate is gonna arc from one lobe to another, which is where we get to our interlobular because we're going think lobule, think smaller. 
And then when we're on the small scale, so now we're like on the microscopic scale, so we go over here, we get to the afferent arterial. I think when I hear afferent, I think arrives. It's going to arrive at the nephron. The glomerulus, which is a, a basically like a little capillary knot. This is a bit simplified. We'll, we'll get into this more in the next video, but this glomerulus, which is again, this little capillary knot, this is going to be the main thing that gets, is going to pull blood or pull components from the blood, I should say, pull components from the bloodstream into the nephron. And then as we exit out, we're going through the efferent arterial. Um, and that's so, the way I remember it is afferent arrives, efferent exits. Um, because th they're so similar in name, it could be hard for you to remember. But if you remember that alliteration, afferent arrives, efferent exits, that will help you. After we go through there, we have this whole mess. The paratubular capillaries are basically wound around the rest of the nephron. We'll get more into and kind of talk about this more in the next video, um, but we have that, that mess of capillaries all the way around. And then we're going to come out into the interlobular vein, arc over, right, arcuate vein, interlobar in between the lobes, right, interlobar vein, and then to the renal vein, and then back out. So you should be able to tell me, right, especially from a picture, should be able to tell me um, which each of these are. Now I mentioned the nephron and this is on the microscopic scale which um, I know I mentioned this is like the big anatomy of the kidney but this is the workhorse. So when we think nephron we think this is the urine producer. This is the workhorse of the kidney. Um, we have this what's called a renal corpuscle which is the glomerulus, that knot, right? And the capsule that goes around it. Sometimes it's called the Bowman's capsule, sometimes glomerular capsule. Um, I'll probably use those interchangeably. Um, you're welcome to use them interchangeably as well. So if I were to like point this out on a lab exam and you said Bowman's capsule or glomerular capsule, either one would be accepted as correct. Um, so we have those parts. We have the proximal convoluted tubule or PCT. We have the nephron loop, also known as the loop of Henle. The nephron loop has two parts, the descending and ascending. So part of it's gonna go down, part of it's gonna come back up. And then the distal convoluted tubule, which is further down the line. And so these pieces are in order of where blood is going to be filtered and then dealt with right in the nephron. So all these are going in order of flow. So here is our nephron anatomy, and again, this is on the microscopic scale. I mean, you got about a million of these per kidney, so you can imagine how small they have to be to fit them in. Um, but here's our afferent arterial, the glomerulus and its capsule, the efferent arterial leaving, and the paratubular um, capillaries. But as we leave out, we enter the proximal convoluted tubule, and you can see how it lives up to its name, right? It's close to the glomerulus right, because it's the first thing that this fluid's gonna enter into from that glomerulus capsule. Um, and it's all sorts of twisted, hence the, the convoluted part, right? It's all twisting all over the place. Here's our nephron loop or loop of Henle. Again, you can use either term. I'll probably just say nephron loop. Um, we come back up and now we're in the distal convoluted tubule because we've gone further down the line um, and we are still twisting about. And then lastly, each nephron is going to join up with a collecting duct. And we can see here that like multiple nephrons are going to link with the same collecting duct. Now there's two main types of nephrons. We have the cortical and the juxtamedullary nephrons. Um, these ones have a different, the main difference we could say is like the loop of Henle um, or the, the nephron loop. Um, with the cortical nephron, the loop of Henle barely gets down into the medulla, so it's just kind of touching, just kissing the medulla, right? Whereas the juxtamedullary nephron, the loop of Henle is a lot longer, and so it's going to dip way down into the medulla before coming back up to the cortex. Um, but both of these are going to be riding that line between cortex and medulla. So here's the two different nephrons. And again, see, they, both of them are riding between the two regions, 
the difference is, you know, here in this one, we are diving down deep, right, in our juxtamedullary nephron, while our cortical um, nephron is just barely touching that, med that medulla, right, just barely.